Next on BYUSN, what does BYU men's basketball have to do to play themselves back onto the NCAA tournament bubble? And Jets coach Robert Sala doubles down on Zach Wilson. How long will the Jets stick with that? Big questions. We may have some answers. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Thursday, January 5th. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan, who I understand is ready for a long nap today in preparation for tonight. Yeah, a long winter's nap. Uh, no, excited about uh, the next couple of days. We got men's hoops tonight, a ball night. We got uh, men's volleyball coming up this weekend, and then women's hoops and men's hoops. And let's go, baby. So, as mentioned on today's show, it is a men's basketball ball night. Tyler Hawes breaks down the matchup with LMU and the Cougars' road to relevance. If you has one player in the top 100 in college football, should there have been more? And who was it? Mix Ramones of the men's volleyball team previews the season opener tomorrow against McKendry. Plus the beat between two people you didn't know you needed. Mm. Here are today's headlines. BYU men's basketball will take their seven-game win streak on the road to LMU tonight in Los Angeles. Pretty good matchup. Both teams just inside the top 100 of the current net rankings. The Cougars a one-and-a-half point favorite in a late tip. 11 p.m. Eastern. Watch live on ESPNU or listen on BYU Radio. ESPN's Bill Connolly ranks former Cougar left guard Clark, Sir Clark Barrington 92nd on his list of the 100 best college football players from last season. Barrington the Elder allowed three pressures and one sack all season. Part of PFF's top rated pass blocking team in the country. Of course, Clark transferred to Baylor. BYU Gymnastics announces their event captains for the upcoming 2023 season. Lindsey Hunter on floor, Anissa Alvarado on the uneven bars, Elise Rollins on beam, and Alex Mason will take captain responsibilities for the vault. The Cougars open the season this Saturday at the Super 16 Vegas meet against several of the top programs in the country. And Ashley Hatch made the 24-player training team for camp this January with USA Soccer this morning. Camp will feature two games in New Zealand against the football ferns in Wellington and Auckland ahead of the World Cup there in New Zealand this summer. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. What's Trending presented by Tim Daly Ford, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Lucky seven in a row for BYU men's basketball. They have, yes indeed, won seven straight games and will put that streak on the line tonight in Los Angeles against a much improved LMU team. The Cougars currently 12-5 and on the season, Jerem. They're 2-0 and to open up West Coast Conference play for only the fourth time in 12 WCC seasons. They're getting healthy with the return of Spencer Johnson. Maybe Trevin Nell joins the team uh, in a few weeks. All good things, yet the Cougars remain well out of the NCAA tournament conversation. So the question today is, what can BYU do with a seven-game win streak in play right now to play themselves back onto the bubble? Obviously, keep winning. It's just how many wins will suffice. Obviously, this week at LMU, at San Diego. Gonzaga in town next Thursday. I think even if BYU... Wins this week and then pulls off the big upset next uh, Thursday. Still not, uh, still not on the bubble per se. I think they need to play themselves still into it. You have a quad four loss currently as of today. You have a quad three loss as well. South Dakota and UVU respectively. UVU is almost a quad two game. Beat the Ducks recently. UVU is playing good ball. Hopefully They've won that's eight a quad in a row. Two. Hopefully that's quad two when all is said and done. Um, you probably need to keep winning. Pepperdine, Santa Clara, San Francisco, St. Mary's. If you got through January on this win streak that includes top 15 net teams currently in Gonzaga and St. Mary's, by the way, number 12 highest ever net rank for St. Mary's today, then yes, you are, you are on the bubble, and I don't know, maybe you're in, but um, BYU certainly needs to go on a heck of a run here in January. The benefit is in January, BYU hosts Gonzaga and St. Mary's. So if you're going to do it, you got to do it in January. Keep winning. See what happens. I'd like to see this team climb at least into the NIT space. Right now, BYU out of that, in my opinion. But they're playing good ball. They're getting better. They're getting reinforcements, as you mentioned. And perhaps this team can discover some consistency um, and continue this. You certainly need to beat Gonzaga and or St. Mary's to have more 
resume there, though, because BYU has one quad one win at this point. They're going to get a few more opportunities with the Zags and uh, St. Mary's, but right now nobody else in the top 75 in net. Perhaps Santa Clara or LMU or San Francisco climb into that space, and then you have some more opportunities. But obviously you got to keep winning. I just wonder if it would take the rest of January on a crazy wow. run. That is, I mean, seven straight wins is nice, right? To go undefeated through the rest of January. And just to be clear, you feel like that's just to get on the bubble, not into I, the tournament. I No, just I don't know what it'll take to be in the conversation. Like, on the bubble means, okay, you're one of the last eight out, right? Like, if yes. you're like the 12th out, you're not on the bubble. Okay, so um, one of the last eight teams in on Joe You'd have to be Lenardi's mentioned by Lenardi. Um, yeah, I think BYU needs to win past Gonzaga to get into that space. Okay, so They don't have enough good wins, and they have too many bad losses. Let's examine what BYU getting through Gonzaga with wins would actually mean. That would be 10 straight wins, and then you would have in that run wins against Creighton, Utah, at LMU, which according to Ken Pomeroy is a Tier B game, and it's a Quad 2 game. Yeah. And then you would have a quad one win against Gonzaga. So if BYU wins 10 straight, then I think they will firmly be on the bubble because you just look at what is on the bubble right now. Like the last team in is USC. They are 86 in the current net rankings. They're 68 in Ken Palm. And if BYU beats LMU and Gonzaga, then the Cougars would have a resume in terms of quality wins and then the one bad loss comparable to USC. So I feel like... 10 straight wins? Mind you, if BYU does that, they would be 5-0 and in West Coast Conference play for the first time ever. BYU has never started WCC play 5-0. and And they would be in first place of the conference, which just sounds absurd. This team was 5-5 five and five coming off losses to South Dakota and Utah Valley. This team had been written off. They were sub-200 in the net rankings. So to their credit... They have strung together these victories. Three more, and I don't know how Joe Lenardi would leave BYU off the bubble conversation because now you have some quality to your resume with, again, wins against Creighton, Utah, LMU, and Gonzaga. To me, that sounds certainly like a bubble team, even with the one loss to South Dakota. Then maybe we can start making excuses for that game. Well, Spencer Johnson was hurt. He didn't play. It There's was just no a bad. For Q4. You're, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Q fours are bad. Then I feel like that kind of gets washed out or scrubbed out a little bit because, like, yeah, they had that bad loss. That was weird. And then maybe the committee looks at well, why. Well, why did they lose that game? Oh, they had some injuries because they want to justify. Well, not how committee, does that, just Lenardi. Right? How does that team? Now all of a sudden have wins against Creighton, Utah, LMU, at LMU, and then against Gonzaga. They'd certainly be more interesting. USC is 9-0 and in quad three and four. That's the difference between USC and BYU, right? BYU has some blemishes on the resume. You're going to have to make up for them. And, what if Utah and Valley becomes a quad awesome. two and it's only one blemish? One blemish as a quad four is a big blemish. That's a tough one. But you can make up for it. You just have to do a lot. Like it's, it's harder to make up for a quad four than it is win a quad one. Like, a quad four is worse than the good of a quad one. So BYU is going to have to win, and not all quad ones are the same. A quad one versus Gonzaga certainly makes a national splash. That's awesome. I, th I wonder if BYU has to also get a St. Mary's, who, by the way, is being grossly under-respected nationally. Like, they are top 15 in Ken Palm and Net. Like, this team should be ranked and super relevant. We'll see how BYU matches up against the Gales, who are vastly improved and continue to be good. BYU has certainly got to uh, keep winning. Now, the conversation um, also gets us to this point. What would it take for BYU to actually make the NCAA tournament? So team ranking says, who knows what this means, 76% if they get to 24 wins. Let's assume BYU has to go at least 1-1 one one in the WCC tournament. That means they'd have to go 13-3 and three in league. I just don't see 13-3 and three happening. That's a tall I, order. I think BYU is in the 5-7 to seven loss range in league. I like, picked BYU to go 19-12 and 12 in the regular season. And I still don't think I'm that far off. Yeah, I, they, they have to win a bunch more. 13-3 and three in league is ambitious. I think it's ambitious for St. Mary's, who's 12 in net. Again, um, you know, Gonzaga uh, might lose a game or two. Like 13-3, and three, they're not going to go 13-3. But it, it's going to be tough to make the tourney. I would like BYU to at least get to the NIT this year. BYU doesn't play games that aren't in the NIT. 
Um, and then you go into uh, the Big 12 and you try and build from there and just see what happens. But this program should never not make the NIT. I think that is a despicable season. That was the last season a couple years ago before Mark Pope took over. And that was part of the reason that it uh, all blew up, right? Is if you don't make the NIT, that is terrible. Like, this is a proud basketball tradition here. BYU was at a point where they were pretty low, and they have climbed out of it with a nice win streak here. And perhaps the addition of Spencer Johnson and or Trevin Nell and some consistency and role definition with Dallin Hall as a starter and Rudy Wink. Maybe they find it, and they can get back into the NIT. They are certainly pacing towards that, but the NCAA tournament feels like a tall task. Now, what if BYU just makes a gajillion threes and wins the WC? Yes, that's always an option. But it's also an option for Portland and Pacific. So it's silly even to BYU just... BYU hasn't yes, won a conference exists. tournament championship in 22 years. Let me say this. I don't know that BYU is going to win a tourney ever again. Because it's just going to be crazy hard in the Big 12. Like, that is a crazy thing to even consider. It's not about winning the Big 12, though. It's about getting to the tournament. It's not about winning the WCC. It's about getting to the tournament. You can accomplish certain goals without that. Like BYU football, yes, it'd be amazing to win the Big 12. It'd also be amazing to get an at-large and make the expanded college football playoff in the future. Whatever. New Year's Six. Like, that would be amazing. That's what we're talking about. This group is getting better. That's exciting. Is it, is it going to make the NCAA tournament? Well, they've got to win a lot more to even be considered. If BYU sweeps the road series this weekend at LMU and at San Diego, then they will pace for something that is better than I expected because BYU typically drops a game or two early in conference play and especially when they have early conference games on the road. Tonight feels like that game. Like BYU needs to come out a victor tonight. This is a, t this is a really tough game. LMU is a good team. They are way improved. Typically you wouldn't be like, yeah, LMU, LMU. Top 100 oh, offense, yes. right? They, they shoot it very well. They don't turn it over. Um, BYU defensively is pretty good, um, you know, top 50. So that's the matchup there. But BYU's got to not do what they did last year, which is go down 17. This is They won, but don't get in that situation. LMU again. is on par with San Francisco. A win at LMU based on and the metrics. Santa Clara. Based on the metrics, a win at LMU is like winning at San Francisco or at Santa Clara. Those three, to me, are very interesting right now. Obviously, Gonzaga, St. Mary's. But the next other four, BYU, as you mentioned, LMU, Santa Clara, San Francisco, those are tough games, tougher than anything. Those are yeah. top 100 teams. Well, let's be clear. We're not saying, hey, this is going to happen. BYU is going to get to 15-5. and five. They're going to win 10 straight games. They're going to be Gonzaga. We are discussing hypotheticals, yeah. what it would take for sure. BYU to just sure. get back on the bubble. And because the and next be three fun. games, the next three games are so tough, at LMU is really difficult tonight. BYU has not typically won this game in the last few years on the road. So if they do that, then it's like, okay, take a pause a little bit and be like, hmm, have they figured something out? They win at San Diego, which is a place they have like strangely struggled, right? And it's your final game in Gersten. It's your final game in the Slim Gym. Yeah. And, and then next year you embrace the toughest thing ever, the Big 12. So if, if BYU can do this, they win the two road games, they start 4-0 and for only the second time ever in West Coast Conference play. That's exciting. Let's then, go. Then maybe they have earned the respect and they have, they have earned the right for us to be like, huh, maybe they are a bubble team. If well, they do they, that. Because they haven't typically done this. Yeah. Even with the good teams. But you, the are, great what, teams. you are what you've done and what you've been doing lately. You can't just ignore the bad and only embrace the good, right? BYU mm. has some tough losses. They are making up for them, but uh, can they make up for it with the win against Gonzaga? Yeah, so I don't see how you make the even sniff the tourney if you don't beat Gonzaga and or St. Mary. You got to, yeah. I mean, you one of the two. Those. One of the two. At you least have one to have. Two, one of the both. two. Yeah. Interesting conversation for sure. Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. Our question of the day is, what can BYU men's basketball do to play themselves back onto the NCAA tournament bubble? Jerem feels like they got to maybe win through January. And I think, as unlikely as it sounds, you win three games, including wins at LMU against Gonzaga, and you're 5-0 in conference play, then I feel like BYU is back on the bubble. Either way, it's a stretch. It's a stretch. What do you think? At Playoff Bogey on Twitter answers, BYU needs to win five out of eight in the Gonzaga, St. Mary's, USF, and LMU matchups. I would throw Santa Clara in there, too. Like, they're, they look good to me.
22 overall wins playoff bogey is calling for before March and BYU needs to get to the championship game in the West Coast Conference Tournament. It's mm. definitely possible, but it's also a steep hill to climb. Now, don't confuse getting into the tournament because this feels like he's maybe trying to say how they get into the tournament. We're just, just saying on get the on bubble. the bubble. Just get on the bubble. 22 wins would absolutely put BYU on the bubble. 22 wins on Selection Sunday, 12% chance. 23 wins, 40%. 24 wins, 76%. Team rankings. Who knows what that means, right? But it's just interesting to look at. Yeah, 22 wins, you're on the bubble because you've beaten some good teams and you've got a better than expected, at least according to me, record in West Coast Conference play. 22 depends wins. Depends what the net is. Depends what, yeah. Well, think depends. about think about that. Yeah. You're 10 and 5 in non-con, right? So if you have 22 wins, you win 12 conference games. That's That's a lot. I, I thought 9 and 7 was ambitious. Those are good metrics, sure, but there's other metrics I would need to know whether to know whether BYU is on the bubble. Hashtag BYUSN. Who did you beat? What are your quad ones? You Do you have another quad four? You yeah. tell us what you think. Yeah. What makes BYU bubble-licious? What do they have to do? <sighs> Keep winning. We know that. Okay, join Gregor Bell on the call tonight as Cougars play LMU pregame at 10 Eastern with Shep on Cougar Pregame Live on BYU Radio. Up next, Jerem Jordan goes one-on-one -on -one with his good friend and studio co-host Tyler Hawes. What does the all-time leading scorer in BYU basketball history think that BYU has to do to get bubblicious? This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. Do you ever feel small? Three, two, one, go! Have regrets? I guess we all have them. And trust, that's tough to earn. Or regain. You are the winner of survival! Glad we're doing this. Oh, it's a game night, or should I say... Ball night! Yes, for BYU men's basketball, they'll take on LMU in Los Angeles. I'm Spencer Linton, this is Jerem Jordan to my left, and you are watching your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play. -play. We call it BYU Sports Nation. Yes, we do, and we need some answers about what's going on with BYU men's basketball. Seven-game win streak, it's awesome. Should Trevin Nell come back? How can BYU play its way back onto the bubble? I talked to Tyler Haas earlier about all those things. All right, what's up, Tyler? How you doing, man? Doing great, Jerem. How are you, man? I'm great. Game day at LMU. We'll talk about the matchup with the Lions in a second. But our question of the day, we want to get your opinion. What can BYU men's basketball do to play itself back into the bubble? Well, I, it's definitely an uphill battle from here. Uh, it's it's something we've talked a lot about, Jerem. You know, the, the stain on the season was 
the, you know, the, the South Dakota and the UVU game. And if they would have found a way to, uh, you know, win those games and get over that hump a little bit earlier, this, this whole conversation would be very different. Um, but they're going to have to find a way to, I think, at least finish second in league uh, with those quad four losses. Um, they're going to have to beat St. Mary's and they're going to, they're probably going to have to beat Gonzaga at least once if they want to be in question and they've got to perform well in the tournament. You know, the one thing that I will say that most committee members look at when evaluating tournament teams is who's playing the best basketball right now during the year. And, and I think BYU definitely is trending that way. They, I mean, they're on a, they're on a big win streak and they're playing really, really well. There's a chance they get Trevin Nell back. There's some factors that come into play that, you know, may make an argument for, for a tournament team, but they're, they're going to have to, to win games and you can't drop games that uh, you're supposed to win, which is always a scary thing in conference play, right? Because there are some teams that are just scary, weird gyms, weird circumstances, um, but really good players. And, you know, even, even though it's a quad three or quad four game, there are really good players that can light it up. And, um, and so you, you don't want to have one of those things happen. Um, but really, if you can finish second and beat Gonzaga and play well in the tournament and continue to get better, um, I think there, there's maybe a chance and maybe an argument to, to get in there. I think if you finish second in the WCC, you're certainly in a, a great spot. Obviously, the resume has got to match, but typically that second team has at least been on the bubble, if not in. Um, three teams has been hard to come by in league history, just a handful of times for that. But January seems to be the month because BYU has got Gonzaga and St. Mary's at home. So if BYU is going to do it, they've got to do it this month. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, the opportunity is right now. And uh, we, we've said it, they're playing their best ball right now and shooting the ball well. And listen, ag against St. Mary's and Gonzaga, I mean, you have to play well on both ends of the floor to beat those teams. They're not just going to roll over and 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 die, right? You've got to go go in there and beat them. And um, you know, I think BYU also has has been plagued by this this turnover bug, and they they've found ways to win. I don't know how they're continuing to turn the ball over around 20 times and find a way to win. Four and one tie. He, it, it's a winning formula. <laughs> it does not happen, Jero. So, and you cannot do that against St. Mary's and Gonzaga. Yeah. So uh, they're going to have to take care of the ball. They're going to have to shoot the ball really well. Um, but I mean, we've said it all year long. All the talent is there. All the right pieces are in place. And uh, they're trending upward. And so I could definitely see them having a big January. It's important. And BYU, I argued earlier, needs to probably go at least 13-3, and three, given what happened in non-conference with the five losses, to give itself a chance to get to 24 or 25 wins. And then some of the numbers I found say, you know, at, at 24, you go to 75% chance to make the tourney. 25, you go up to about 95%. 13-3 in league feels like a stretch, though, given the inconsistency at times of this team. How in the world could BYU possibly go 13-3? Can they keep it going? What have you seen that makes you feel like there's a chance that BYU could, like you said, finish as high as second? Because right now St. Mary's is the highest it's ever been in net today, number 12. Yeah, so, I mean, a couple of things. I, I think starting on the defensive end, uh, all the right pieces are in place. I mean, you've got really good rim protection and Foose and Atiki. I think they've done a really good job of showing what they can do. But then you have, you know, guys like Gideon George that are elite defenders on the wing. You got Spencer Johnson back, um, just long athletic guys that know how to play defense, understand team concept, and they're they're playing really well. And so uh, and then they're shooting the ball well on the other end. And I think if, if you get Trevin Nell back, uh, you could definitely make a run. And I think, 
you know, there's going to be moments, there's going to be some scary moments where, you know, that it feels like the season and the tournament is in the balance. Um, you know, I, thinking back to my, my brother's senior year, a couple of years ago, I mean, there were some, there were some scares there, uh, you know, at San Diego, um, St. Mary's, obviously, you know, this team's going to have to step up and make plays down the stretch, but, you know, they've had a couple of games this year, Jerem, where they've had to figure out how to win with, with five, six minutes left and the game's tied or they're down a few points. Uh, I mean, Creighton, you know, Missouri state, they like, Dallin Hall was huge in those games. Um, I think another factor is just the leadership on this team. You know, Rudy Williams is a guy that that comes to mind. He's embraced his role coming off the bench. Um, he's scoring at a high clip and and doing well. So I like I I really feel comfortable with how um, the the roles on the team have shaken out and that that first and second unit. Certainly tonight uh, is the next step. If BYU loses tonight, maybe what we're talking about doesn't even matter because <laughs> it's early in conference. Mm -hmm. you got to go get some wins at LMU. This is a game last year, Tyler, where BYU had to come back down 17. Cam Shelton and Kelly Lea Pepe and Jalen Anderson are doing some good work uh, for Stan Johnson and the Lions. What do you think of the matchup tonight that in a lot of places is a one-point game? Yeah, LMU's playing really well um, and and doing some good things. They, I mean, always have really good guards, high level guards that that can score. And Le Pepe inside's obviously uh, a tough matchup. But uh, you know, this is a team that is a little bit scary. Uh, you look at their their non conference uh, resume, and it's impressive. I mean, they beat they beat Georgetown. They beat Nevada. They beat uh, they beat another really notable team, and they're they're playing good basketball. And so, um, I think they are coming off a loss at Pacific, but you know they they have really good pieces, and they've shown what they're capable of. And and so this is the challenge always in WCC play. Like these teams are so capable and tough, and you know, they definitely have moments going in and out, and it's really easy to overlook somebody and say, oh, th this is a, an easy win, but you cannot do that. And BYU is not in a position right now to, to overlook anybody. And so uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, it was Wake Forest in overtime. So another, another nice win, as you right. mentioned, yeah, for Wake uh, Forest. LMU. Okay, you mentioned Trevin Nell. Um, he potentially could come back soon. We'll see if it's tonight or the next couple of weeks. Is it worth it for him to come back um, if it's uh, just part of conference play, or should he redshirt this year and have two years in the Big 12? Yeah, it's it's tough to say. Um, you know, that, that'll be a personal decision, and that'll be a decision he makes with uh, his family and coaches. Um, but I think if he is itching to play and, you know, feels healthy enough to, to jump in and be able to contribute right away, um, you know, that's only a question that, that he can answer. He knows where his body's at. And, you know, I will say I had a few injuries in my career and playing overseas. And it's tough to, after you've been out a few months, it, it's a transition period coming back. It takes time to, to get in the loop of practice, get up to game speed, game pace, and, um, and, you know, one of the most surprising things is just how physical the game is. You have to get used to and be confident in your body to to push people around and, you know, get in the mix. You can't be playing hesitant at all. It's got to be all out, all out effort. And so if he's there and, you know, he's comfortable with, you know, using his year of eligibility, I would say, you know, he could make a huge difference. I mean, he provides consistent three-point shooting, experience on the floor. Um, last year, you know, Coach Pope and, and Coach Figure talked about how his defense really improved. And, you know, we saw moments of that. And so, I don't know. It, it will just have to be a, a personal decision um, with, with them. But I, I definitely think he can help. 
He's a big time three point shooter right now. Noah Waterman, the guy in the 40s, right? Perhaps Trevin can come in and make a splash initially. Maybe it takes a sec for him to get up to speed. I don't know. Could affect rotations. More on that uh, coming up in the coming weeks as we await that. Let's finish with this. There was some conversation about potentially the NCAA tournament considering expanding to as many as 90 teams. Would you like it if that happened? And would that be good for BYU in your opinion? Yeah, I saw that, Jerem. I don't know. You know, there, there's something magical about um, keeping it where it's at because it's an elite group of teams, and it is so hard to get in that tournament. And uh, that always creates a lot of a lot of talk and a lot of stories about resume, preseason schedule, and um, and and conference play. And I think. It's fun that there's always a chance for these, you know, low-level mid-major conferences to. They, every team has a chance to to get in, and and that would still be the case. But, you know, I I just worry that, you know, that that prestige of getting in the tournament would would lose a little bit of value. But, you know, you look at it on the other side, and it's it's. I mean, I wouldn't mind having a couple extra weeks of watching games. You know, I think that would be really fun. And and really, I think those top 100 teams, you know, you're talking about the 90 best teams in the country. I really think there's more and more teams and programs that are playing top level basketball. And so, you know, I, I'm a little bit torn inside because I, I want it to remain that, uh, you know, that elite um level of competition and, and storyline and talk throughout the year. But, uh, you know, you can't you can't argue watching more basketball. More basketball is fun, and it depends. Do you want uh, to see BYU in the tourney, or do you want to enjoy March Madness? <laughs> we want both, of course, <laughs> but the Big 12 is certainly going to be a challenge. Well, good stuff, Ty. I appreciate you uh, giving great insight, of course, uh, that we can see on BYU Sports Nation game day, which we will have a – one-hour pregame show for Gonzaga next week. It's not on BYU TV, but we got you in the pregame. Spence on the court. It's going to be fun. We'll be in studio with Blaine. It'll be great. And I appreciate you repping uh, BYU Sports Nation with the hat, man. Looks like yeah, you got the I've swag. I've got my hat on backwards. But Let's go, baby. There it is right there. Let's go. Repping the brand. Tyler, thanks for the time, man. Thanks, Jeremy. All right. So if BYU does what Tyler mentioned, Finish second in league. Certainly they are in the mix. I oh, just, yeah. I just think third is ambitious, honestly, at this point. Um, that's re Realistically, that's the goal. Can BYU finish third in the league again? Because that third team typically is at least an NIT team, if not in the tournament. That's only happened a couple of times. But uh, finishing third would be awesome. There is a ch I mean, BYU's got to be consistent. They're in danger of being like a sixth seed. The, the middle of the league is strong this year. Uh, BYU should not play on Friday. Just don't finish seventh or worse. That'd be nice. Despite right. our longings for BYU TV to have another they, BYU game. They should not play on Friday. We want a Saturday quarterfinal. They just finish sixth oh, or better. Oh, we want better. a Monday semi. Sixth or better. Like, yeah. they finished fourth. I'd, I'd, I'd be happy with fourth a fourth place finish fourth in the be... league this year. Yeah. Because it is strong. It but, is strong. Yeah. Okay, yeah. catch all the sports content your heart could ever desire on BYU TV on demand on BYUSN.com or the BYU TV app. Up next, Cosmo may have just taken on a new rival. Who is it and why? Mm -hmm. This is BYU Sports Nation. Ain't no rival to Cosmo. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again, and you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics.
Utah is a special place. Our communities, the people, the history, there is no place quite like Utah. At Siegfried & Jensen, we're honored to say that we are from Utah. We live here, work here, and when someone is injured, we're proud to say we've helped a neighbor when they've needed it most. We know Utah. At Siegfried & Jensen, we're here for you. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Here's the thing about BYU Sports Nation. It's a banner that unites fans all over the world. BYU TV and BYU Radio are all about bringing your family events and games live. On air, online, and on the free apps. It's the next best thing to being there. Connecting your fandom with others across BYU Sports Nation. Download the apps and get exclusive access to analysis and interviews with players and coaches. BYU TV and BYU Radio. The place for all things Cougar sports. Tune in. Join in. This is BYU Sports Nation to interact with the show. Get some content throughout the day. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and what did I, what did I miss? Instagram? I can't remember. I don't know. There are a million. There's right five. There's and five. be real. <laughs> yes! We should start doing be real for BYU Sports Nation. Ben, we should. That'd should be awesome. we? No, should for real. <laughs> Middle of the show, we got to do it. Is I'm Jerem. serious. I am Spencer. And let's be real. And whip it. Cougar Whip Round presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. There have been some great ideas discussed today. That was the best. <laughs> Joey Men's Soup is favored by one and a half tonight at LMU. What do you think of that one? I think it's favorable for BYU. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. I don't agree with it, honestly. Oh, you think LMU should be the favorite? I, I think LMU is, feels more like a one and a half point favorite. Mm. So, I don't know. I, may, maybe they know something I don't know, but like road contest, evenly matched. BYU's typically dropped one of these road games early in conference play. Uh, I kind of want BYU to be the underdog so they play like the underdog. Yeah, L listen, LMU is playing good ball. They have some nice wins, as Tyler mentioned. Beat Wake Forest in overtime. Like, they, they're playing good ball. They BYU have zero is, quad four losses. BYU is a better team. BYU is more talented. Okay. Um, BYU needs to go in there and win. Show it. Show it. Because, again, the middle of the league is pretty good. And if you beat LMU on the road, and you, like you mentioned, go and win in the Slim Gym. You're, now you're going. Conference? Now you're going. You're 4 0 in conference for just the second time ever. Nine game win streak would tie the most in the Mark Pope era. Let's go, man. Jaron, BYU's only been 3 0 in conference one time ever. 3 0. If you tell me you get to that mark. We did not think this would be the case when entering. Wow. The season, but it is what it is. BYU basketball has the 17th best free throw percentage defense in the nation. I know this is Gregor Bell's favorite step. It seems like a simple question. <laughs> But to what do you attribute the Cougars' excellence in free throw percentage defense? At home, it's the Rock. Yes. On the road, I don't know. Uh, but, B <laughs> but BYU uh, does an excellent job at home of distracting the opponent. It's specifically the tube guys mm -hmm. at home, Jeremy. Yeah. The addition of the tube guys, the fly guys, the sky dancers, whatever, whatever you want to yeah, call whatever them. Whatever they are. Those blue inflatable characters. <laughs> the, the Tobias Funke. Mark Pope said we're nude. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, is this an honor code violation? Clark Barrington comes in at 92 on ESPN's Top 100 College Football Players of 2022. Do any other Cougars deserve to be on that list? Yes, Blake Freeland. Mm. And had Jaron Hall been healthy all season, Jaron's maybe on that list. But yeah. Blake Freeland, if Clark Barrington's on that list, Blake Freeland needs to be on that list. We're only 9-0 linemen. So it's, did BYU have two of the top ten in the country? Uh, perhaps just off. Number one pass-blocking line in the country. And then there were 15 quarterbacks on it. Jaron didn't make it. I was hoping Jaron would be one of the top 15 quarterbacks. Apparently not according to Bill Clinton. Huh, interesting. New York Jets head coach Robert Sala says the franchise is sticking with Zach Wilson through heck or high water. That's not what he said. Okay, he didn't say heck, but this is BYU TV. Do, you think, do you think the Jets and Zach Wilson can figure out a way to have some type of successful relationship moving forward. I almost don't believe him, honestly. Because it's like, what do you mean stick with? You're going to give him another shot to be the starter? That's what I I'm Or you're thinking. just keeping him on the roster and you're not trading him. Well, then he's in purgatory. Um, let, either let him go or give him an offseason. Or maybe if you want, you can get a veteran. But going into his third year, he should be able to manage himself. You get. I think the Jets need to give him one more chance. And for a couple of games, if it doesn't work out, you can be completely done with him. But I fear that they are done with him now. In my heart of hearts, I believe Robert Sala is the eternal optimist. 
and he believes that right, Zach Wilson will figure it out. But are you actually going to give out. him another chance? I think Robert Sala will give him another chance. Well, the Jets fans give him that. No, they've already written him off, but it's not <laughs> their decision to make. It's the coaches, obviously. So yeah. I think he will. But they could boo him off the field like he was uh, in that Thursday night game. Cosmo tweeted out this picture last night of himself and Washington State's mascot, Butch. Is, the, is this the rivalry we didn't know existed? <laughs> you versus the guy she does not have to worry about. He said it had to be said. No, it's not a rivalry because somebody else actually put out the comparison. Cosmo just took the picture. I'm not sure where he got it. <laughs> no, there's no rivalry when you are the guy that We're near the guy. you should be worried about. Right? Tom Brady's not like thinking about Kirk no. Cousins. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> or who, who was it? It was Jimmy Garoppolo walking next to uh, Cole, Colt McCoy. <laughs> Did you see that? Did you yes. see that comparison? That's the type of comparison we're talking about here. Yeah. Is Jimmy Garoppolo worried well, about Colt McCoy? Cosmo greater than no. Jimmy, but yes. I, Jimmy's looks, there you go. Yeah, no. <laughs> BYU men's volleyball opens the season tomorrow night as we push forward on BYU Sports Station. We got something to prove as an unranked team. Outside hitter Mix Romanus yeah. joins us live to discuss what he expects this season and beating the odds. Let's go. This is BYU Sports Nation. Pride of Latvia. Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. is all about the rivalries. Red, Ooh. quarterback, wide out, rewards. Wait, what? My style, checking rewards. My style, right. For Mountain America's My Style Checking, it's all about the benefits. Loan discounts. But it's hard to pick a favorite. No, mobile phone protection. Telehealth. You're gonna need that when we're done. I heard that, let's go. Get the account rivaled by no one. My Style Checking from Mountain America. We thank you for the newest addition to our family. Where are you, Mom? I won't be here long, and I'll do whatever I can to find you and we can be a family. If she knowed what a girl she is, she'd be here in a minute. You're not losing a family, you're getting another one. You're a part of me. Nobody can ever take that away from us. BYU Sports Nation rolls on live from Studio B, and let's get right to it. We're in Studio B, but we're dealing with an alpha here. He is the alpha of BYU men's volleyball outside hitter, Mix Romanus. Mix, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Oh, Mix, thank you for having Looking me. Looking good, dude. I, mean, like, absolutely. I don't deserve that today. intro, man. I don't deserve that intro, but I appreciate Tell it. Tell us about the wardrobe today, though. Okay, so, uh, I mean, just want to make the girlfriend happy, the mom happy today. <laughs> They kind of wanted me to look a little bit better than I did last yeah. time, so I was like, all right, I'll, I'll pick up my game a little bit. So. Class it up? What did you wear last time? It was a polo or something? No, it was just like a BYU zip up. I was yeah. like, I mean, guys, yeah. okay. look, looking good. Look, look good, feel good. Look good, it's feel true. good. Okay. It's true. Okay. Well, again, you're only adding to your case of being the alpha and the pride of Latvia, as Jerem said before we went to break. But, and let's talk about that. So you're from the United States, yeah. Southern California, but uh, you're of Latvian descent. Grandparent, you speak it. Yeah. And you went to a, a camp during the summer in Wisconsin or something where you'd interact with Close. other... Michigan. Yeah. Michigan, okay. Um, and you represented Latvia this, sum this summer with the national team. Yeah. What, what does Latvia mean to you in your life? I mean, man, it means everything. I mean, being raised through the, all the camps and stuff, 
Like, uh, funny thing, my friend from camp is coming, like, flying down today to come watch some games, so. Fantastic. Yeah, but it, it means a lot. It's just, it's half of who I am. Mm. Going there, knowing the culture, you know, church, all this stuff, and just, like, I can't describe to you how, how much that culture just means to you because it's so small, it's so tight-knit, and, like, being known and just, I mean, Everyone knows each other, and the moment you hear a Latvian name, you know the person, you kind of know their background already, because you guys are from, like, you're Latvians, and if you're a Latvian, you're already, like, brothers and sisters. You mentioned church. Which church? Lutheran. Lutheran, Lutheran specifically. Gotcha. Yeah. Awesome. It is clearly a, a huge part of who you are, mm -hmm. and now you are at BYU, so you bring in this... Latvian representation to be a and, Latvian athlete probably and it's I mean, an international cool. program right so oh, yeah. what does it mean to you to have those international ties at BYU when when we have had so many guys but no Latvians I mean I'm honored in a sense you know it's just it's a surreal experience to have and especially having Latvia as one of the names to be like put with the BYU Cougars it's just I mean it's exciting it's awesome being one of the being a front runner being at a yeah know, New Crusader, it's just, I think it's fun, and I think it's a really good time, and it's just, uh, you know, motivating the other younger Latvian kids, like, you know, you can get to a big school, too, you know, you can go play mm -hmm. ball here, ball there, you can do whatever you want as long as you just put your mind to it. Okay, let's talk about this group this season. Certainly last year was, uh, you know, a step back, but you guys are a young, hungry group. There's a lot um, in terms of expectations that isn't there. Who knows, right? Um, unranked for the first time in the preseason poll, picked to finish sixth in the league, blah, blah, blah. Young, hungry group. Tell us about this team this year and what you guys hope to accomplish. I mean, the, the team this year is just a group of dogs. I mean, we're just working hard. We're going in and out every day. I mean, we're hitting the weight room hard. We're just motivating each other. And just everyone has a chip on their shoulder this year. Like, everyone wants to fight. Everyone wants to be in the game. Everybody just wants to go crazy and just feral on the court. I mean, I cannot wait. And we've all put, put in the work. We've all worked hard. And this season, I think, I mean, I have a bad habit of jinxing myself. So I'm just going to say I'm confident what we can do this season, and I'm confident to, I really, I'm really excited for a team to underestimate us. How are, and many will. Um, how are you managing sort of being on both ends of this? Because you were redshirt on the 21 team, which mm -hmm. is one of the great BYU teams ever, and then going into a season like this where, yes, teams will look at BYU and go, oh, that's a win, or is it? Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a different type of feeling. Knowing that we had Gabby Garcia, Felipe DeBrito, Davide Gardini, Zach Eschenberg, Wilson, I, I mean, I'm not keep naming names, but knowing, having them, it was just a, they had their chemistry on the court. They had their game. And it's very hard to, like, as a younger guy, you understand that that's not your game. Like, that's, that's what they created for themselves. And, like, you just need to find your rhythm with your team. So right now, that's what we're doing. We're finding our stride with our players that we have now and getting into it. And once you find that and solidify that, the sky's going to be the limit. Mix Romanus of BYU Volleyball with us on BYU Sports Nation. Mix, you are one of the clear leaders on this team. And with that comes added responsibility. How do you feel about the role of being an alpha or leader on this squad? I mean, it's nice. The pressure's there. But I feel like I've, I mean, I hate talking about myself. But I love just the feeling of, uh, I know I put in a lot of work. I know I put in the extra hours in certain aspects like wave room, volleyball, all this stuff. And being able to like uh, translate that into the court, like onto the team, it means a lot to me. And I know I can help the team grow and they're helping me grow every day. I don't think I'm really like a clear, distinct leader. I think it's just we're, we're all just bought in. We're just all talking to each other, communicating and just like, taking the next step. And you mentioned you've worked on a lot of stuff. Specifically, what have you worked on this off season to improve your game? Oh, the mental side of things. Mm. I mean, as a student athlete, you always have the idea of academics and athletics and always just that pressure. When I was in Latvia this summer, I kind of learned my balance, the one in between like social life and just working hard. So just like seeing family, seeing friends that I haven't seen in like six years and finally understanding my balance that I need to make sure I can perform on and off the court just in any sense. It was just a huge learning experience and just like being able to take that, bring it back to here to school, just, uh, I feel like it gave me an upper hand. It gave me an advantage. What's it like being a Lutheran at BYU? Oh, it's interesting. It's definitely <laughs> interesting. I mean, the BYU community is awesome. Like, the nicest people I've ever met. But sometimes if you tell a person, like, uh, I was in a missionary prep class this year. And, uh, you were in a missionary yeah, prep class? Yeah, it's just because uh, I know brother and sister Mullen. They're amazing people. That's great. But, um, 
uh, I like, told, when are you turning your papers in? You're like, well, <laughs> well, I'm not actually turning my papers in. So I was just, it's just funny sometimes because I sit there and I'm like, oh yeah, like, I don't know the scripture. And they're like, how do you not know it? I'm like, oh, I'm not a member. And then you just get like a look and I'm like, oh, like, that's, the, <laughs> that's probably the biggest thing I've ever experienced like with that. But I mean, it's, I, I can't complain. It's definitely different. But once you find your groove, you find your stride, yeah. you just keep going with it. Oh, because so when are you, you are, turning yeah. your papers in? Uh, <laughs> Because you are experiencing this and you're in a unique position as a student athlete and not a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, what would you say to others that are considering that maybe you're like, I don't know about BYU because you're doing it now mm -hmm. and you seem to be enjoying it. Oh, yeah. So what would you say to them? I mean, do what your heart tells you. I mean, just look at what's important to you because sometimes... As a, again, as a student athlete, some people don't take the athlete part that seriously, but here at BYU, they give you all the opportunities to grow as that athlete, or grow as that, I mean, ath academic weapon, as you guys know the trends say right now. But uh, I say go for it, because, I mean, there's still, like, it's not like a normal university where you will just, I don't know, go party more often or all this. I mean, you'll have your group gatherings here and there, but I say just go for it if you want to be great at what you do. Like, mm -hmm. if you love your sport, BYU is the place to be, because they... Man, they give you everything you need to succeed. You can focus on it. Oh, yeah. Uh, as well, uh, whatever you want. Okay, let's talk about some of the new guys on this team. Heath Hughes comes over from Grand Canyon, a setter, certainly competing for the starting spot with Noah Hain. How's that competition been between uh, those two guys? Really good. Like, it's just, it's fun seeing, going, like, seeing them play back and forth. Just, I mean, playing with both of them, it's just awesome. Like, all the time, like, I can, Noah's better at this certain set, like, in, in the scramble play. Heath's better at this certain set in the scramble play. It's just fun seeing, like, both of them ball. I mean, it's an amazing competition. He's, I don't know, he's a little bit bigger. Noah's just, I know, sometimes craftier. It's just a good balance, and I think, uh, I mean, I don't know who's going to pull through in the end, but, I mean, they're both just amazing. Yeah, Noah uh, blew a red shirt last year to play, and the team really acknowledged that sacrifice, and mm -hmm. then uh, he's got that experience, so it'll be fun. And then that second outside, uh, someone replacing Davide Gardini. Who's in the mix there between, I guess, Luke Benson and Trent Moser and some others? Yeah, I think, I mean, man, it's a, it's a tight boat. Luke Benson's definitely has a cannon of an arm, like one of the, it's insane, he's the, you don't expect him to come in and just like rip like that, but man, like we call him 100% Luke, like he says, coach is like, take it down 60%, Luke still rips it 72, and I'm just like, all right, man. I, I You're get talking it. from the service line, from which the service by line. the way, we've got a radar gun in the Smith Fieldhouse this year. Yeah, yep. That'll be awesome. The, the dude's crazy. Worked on his passing. He's, a, again, amazing player. Trent Mosier, one of the smartest people, I, like, one of the smartest volleyball players I've seen. That man can find a way to hit line no matter what. Mm. And I'm just, I, I'm always impressed by that because I can't do that. And I'm like, how does he just keep chomping at it? <laughs> but, I mean, it's a tight competition. I think, I mean, I don't know. It's a, again, it's, it's a tough fight, but I think... I mean, one of them's going to fight through. The coach is going to decide. I just don't know who. You got to decide by Friday. And you yeah. need them all. You need them all. We're going to need them all. It's a long season. Let's go. Well, let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma for big matches against McKendry and Lewis, albeit as an underdog. Take that role and, and relish it, man. I will. Yeah. I will. Makes good luck against uh, McKendry and Lewis this weekend. Awesome. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for raising the, the close game, too. we got to take it up a notch. So man. sharp. Thank Jeez. you. Thank you. All right. Check out Mix and the Cougs tomorrow night. 9 Eastern time season opener. John Stanley is going to be screaming like that a couple of times. 9 Eastern on BYU TV. It is this the week I finally can break through in fantasy basketball. Like, will people actually stay healthy and play? Hope so. You'll believe it. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Welcome to a partnership where customer experience comes first. It's our focus. It's your expectation. We provide support to those that go the extra mile for all of us. Supplying products, training, and service for generations. Learn more at BradyIndustries.com.
Clark. Some of my favorite moments are hearing from the family room just a chorus of laughter. Twist your mothers. BYU TV has been an escape and a refuge for me. We forgot about random acts. We love that one. Today, we wanted to do something nice for you. I see that change on him after that show. It just brightened everybody's day. I can do this. I want to live my life in a way that that show showed me. Do you ever feel small? Three, two, one, go! Have regrets? I guess we all have them. And trust. That's tough to earn. Or regain. You are the winner of survival! Glad we're doing this. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Oh, the beautiful bell tower at BYU amidst the snow. BYU Sports Nation's on demand. You can download the free BYU TV and BYU radio apps and subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. It is time to set our BYU Sports Nation fantasy basketball rosters for the week. A reminder, we finalized those rosters with a total of five players, two from the BYU men's team, two from the women's team, and one from an opponent of either the men or women. We keep score by parbs, points, assists, rebounds, blocks, steals. I am 3-0. I won last week, therefore you get the first transaction opportunity. Yep. Smith, do you have a transaction to I make? do. I'm going to go with an opponent for my first okay. transaction. It's going to be Cam Shelton of LMU. Big time player, 18.6 rebounds. He leads the team in assists. He's a guy that averages almost 30 parbs a game. So I'm going with Cam Shelton. Are you sure all your players are going to play this week? I hope so, because I missed out on Tyler Robertson, who was Portland's big-time guy last yeah, week. Yeah, I would like to acknowledge that I also had Foose miss a game uh, before and still won. Yeah, okay. but I had Spencer Johnson out, too, so it was equalized. But you picked a guy who was currently injured. Okay, Lauren Gustin, Kaylee Smiler stay for me, Foose and Rudy Williams. So I am picking up Eric Williams Jr. of San Diego. San Diego. Uh, who is averaging 10 boards a game, not to mention uh, about 15 a game. So hope for a big game from Eric Williams Jr. on Saturday. All right, one, more, tra men. one more transaction for yep. me. I'm adding Spencer Johnson back on he's because back, he's actually baby. healthy. But he's actually playing in basketball. Games. Dropping Jackson Robinson. So I got Nani Falatea, Rose Bubakar from BYU Women's Basketball, Gideon George and Spencer yep. Johnson, and Cam Shelton of LMU. Nani coming off a career high Massive four. Game. He was awesome, man. Question of the day, what can BYU men's basketball do to play themselves back onto the NCAA tournament bubble? Our elite voice of the day, presented by PAX, Healthcare Elevated. Bailey Eisenbarth on Twitter says, don't lose the quad three games, and you have to beat St. Mary's and Gonzaga at least once. BYU loses less than three conference games. They are in. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, it's a huge If BYU task. goes 13 and three, I'm pretty confident BYU is going to be in. Yeah. Today's rise and shout out presented by Mountain America, wow. the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Let's give it to Ashley Hatch. Made the USA national team. Not the World Cup roster yet. No Cougars ever made that, by the way. She could be the first. I think she's going to do it. Our thanks to today's guests, Tyler Hawes and Mix Robinus. Sorry to Dennis. No time. For Jerem, I am Spencer. And a final shout-out to Justin Whitehour. We'll nice. see you tomorrow on BYU Sports Station. Will BYU Hoops still be undefeated by then? Go Cougs!